Welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome to the Santa Barbara Cal Soap Virtual College Fair. We have an awesome lineup of institutions for you to hear from this evening. Um, before we, but before I turn it over to them, I do have a couple of housekeeping items for you all. My name's Courtney and I'm gonna be your facilitator tonight. Um, this is a webinar, so your cameras and your microphones are off, so our panelists cannot see or hear you this evening, but they know that you might have some questions, so feel free to use the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen and go ahead and ask those questions, so type out your question and then also certainly note the college or university that you're directing, directing your question to. Um, this is being recorded tonight and will be available at strivescan.com slash CalSoap. Um, this is also a really fun way to learn about colleges and universities, so we hope that you enjoy. Um, there's also two more hours after this tonight um, to sign up for some more sessions. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to our first presenter. First up, you're going to have the opportunity to hear from Skidmore College. Take it away whenever you're ready. All right. Thank you very much. And let me get the screen up for you all to see. And we'll get it right here. And welcome to, uh, to Skidmore College that I can bring to you. Uh, my name is Darren Drabeck, Associate Director of Admissions here at Skidmore College. And uh, we are an academic community of approximately 2,600, almost 2,600 undergraduate students. We are an all undergraduate learning community at Skidmore, which what for you that means all of the focus, all of the attention, all of the resources from our faculty and uh, professors will be on you. And uh, that is going to be an exciting opportunity for you over your four years. Um, we are a diverse community attracting and recruiting students from all over the United States and all around the world. Um, students uh, coming from California represent about our uh, third or fourth most populous state of students represented on our campus each year. Um, and students uh, come to Skidmore from over 40 states around the United States and 60 countries around the world. We truly have an international and national reputation. Um, as large as we are, are within the community of, of small residential top tier liberal arts colleges, um, we are maybe to the medium to larger size of different schools. And for us, that uh, presents more opportunities for our students, um, more students, more departments, more majors, some different majors than you may find at other institutions similar um, to us. And uh, that and I'll, and I'll speak to that in a moment when talking more about our academic opportunities for our students. Um, we are almost wholly a residential campus and community. 90% of our students are living on campus. We guarantee housing for our students across the four years. You're required to live on campus for at least the first couple of years, and then uh, that's of your choosing in the latter um, part of your uh, program, and uh, minus maybe time you're doing a study abroad opportunity, which 60% of our students uh, will study abroad before they graduate from Skidmore. But uh, we don't have a Greek system at Skidmore, so all of the campus life is focused around the student clubs and organizations, of which there are many. Um, over 100 clubs and organizations that students can join, um, presenting um, approximately 3,000 events on our campus every year. More events than students go on at Skidmore each year, um, organized by students, for students, um, and in a wonderful opportunity for, for our students to enjoy. Um, that picture on the, the building on the far right is our dining hall and uh, award-winning food. Um, there actually are competitions for campus dining and, and competitions that chefs from different colleges will participate in. And our, uh, our chefs have won gold and, and are one of the, some of the best in all of New York State, often coming in second only to the Culinary Institute of America, which is fine by me. Uh, they should be the best. Um, as academically, Skidmore College is distinctive as a small college that has majors leading to both Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science degrees. Uh, the majority of our majors uh, in our 44 different majors, approximately the same number of minors, so over 80 programs for you to choose from, the majority of our majors do lead to a Bachelor of Arts degree. Uh, but then we have seven programs that are a bit more pre-professional that lead to a Bachelor of Science degree, and those include a management and business major, a uh, human physiological sciences major. We also have a major in education studies that certifies students to teach, and a social work major. And also, uh, three of our fine and performing arts programs, our theater major, our 
dance major and our theater major, um, or sorry, and our studio art major all lead to a Bachelor of Science degree, which in the arts tilt a little bit more closer to a conservatory environment. We're not a conservatory. We don't award the Bachelor of Fine Arts, but we do have a Bachelor of Science degree in some of our fine and performing arts programs. And we attract students who are conservatory caliber students who wanna come and study, be surrounded by the liberal arts and sciences. And so that's something a bit distinctive, the breadth in our curriculum that our students do enjoy in their time at Skidmore. Um, we have a real commitment to sustainability, largely driven by our location here nestled amongst uh, the foothills of the Adirondack Mountains and surrounded by um, natural beauty um, around our campus. Um, we may be the only college or maybe one of just a few uh, colleges in the country that actually owns a hydroelectric dam. Um, and we can draw 11% of, uh, of the power from our hydroelectric dam that powers our campus. Um, and there's our campus, as you can see, surrounded by the natural beauty and lots of green space around um, or surrounding the campus, hundreds of acres of undeveloped land that are on our campus just adjacent to the buildings on the top part of that picture to the north side of campus called the North Woods. Um, and our location finally is absolutely distinctive to the Skidmore experience. Uh, Saratoga Springs, New York is a small city in upstate New York, just 30 minutes north of Albany. Uh, we're three and a half hours or three hours from, from Boston, New York City, Montreal. Um, we are in a city that is most well known as being one of the oldest summer resort communities in all of America. We are home to the oldest thoroughbred horse racing track in the United States, and also the summer home to the New York City Ballet and the Philadelphia Orchestra. An absolutely wonderful place to spend four years. And even as much as it is a um, as much as it is a resort town in the summer, it is very much a college town in the school year for our students to enjoy. Um, and if you are a senior and applying, just a little bit about applying, we're on the common application and the coalition application. We will meet 100% of students demonstrated need if students are qualifying for need-based financial aid and you are offered admission to Skidmore. And our average first year aid package is over $50,000 for students who do qualify for need-based financial aid. And we have both early decision and regular decision um, in our application types. Um, and that's me, and um, we're happy to field questions from you in the chat tonight, or reach out to me later on and look forward to uh, meeting with you and talking to you at some point. There's my bell going off. There we go. Thank you, Courtney. Darren, thank you so much to you and Skidmore College. Audience, don't forget, you can put those questions in the Q&A as you have them. Next up, I have the pleasure of introducing to you Lafayette College. Take it away whenever you're ready. Thank you, Courtney. Got to set my timer as well. Um, hi, everyone. My name is David Mills. I am the Associate Director of West Coast Admissions at Lafayette College. Um, I'm a regionally based representative. Um, I live down in San Diego, California, um, and I work with all students from Southern California, um, all the way up to Santa Barbara. So uh, thank you for coming tonight. Um, and please don't hesitate to reach out to me uh, tonight uh, or in the future if you have any questions. Uh, so just to give you a quick snapshot, uh, we are a small liberal arts college in Easton, Pennsylvania. Uh, you can see uh, a picture there right uh, with part of our campus, um, but also uh, part of our town Easton behind it, as well as the Lehigh and Delaware Rivers crossing. New Jersey is literally right across the river there uh, to give you a little bit of an idea of, of where we're based. Um, and then, of course, behind me, uh, if you can still see it in my virtual background, is a picture of our, our quad on campus as well, which, as you can see, uh, the leaves are turning colors. It's autumn, uh, very much uh, the beautiful four seasons that uh, California, as amazing as it is, doesn't quite tap into uh, in most, most places in Southern California. So if you're looking for the change of seasons, uh, I highly recommend uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, it is gorgeous. Um, okay. So again, a little bit about our college. Uh, we are 2,700 undergraduates. We were founded in 1826. Um, we have um, a beautiful 10 to 1 student to faculty ratio, um, an average class size of about 18. Uh, we really want to maintain that core academic community. Um, like Skidmore, we are undergraduate only, uh, so students are never competing with uh, higher level students uh, for the time of their professors and faculty, for research opportunities. Um, those are all there for our students, for our undergrads. Uh, it's a nice uh, mix of being both academically uh, small in that community, but also having a lot of options, a lot of opportunities, uh, and a bigger college social feel in many ways. For example, we are Division I for our sports. Uh, we are in the Patriot League. 
Uh, we are the Lafayette Leopards. Uh, we have 23 D1 sports teams, which gives a lot of school spirit, a lot of excitement uh, on campus. Uh, we also have over 200 clubs and organizations to be a part of. Uh, and 96% uh, of our students live on campus for all four years. It's a very residential campus. So they are there to maximize their college experience and to be as involved as possible in all those clubs and organizations. Uh, we also have 53 areas of study, um, uh, both the liberal arts and sciences, your traditional humanities, social sciences, natural sciences, uh, fine arts, but then also a really great college of engineering. Um, that sometimes surprises people, but we've been doing engineering for 155 years. Uh, everything is ABET accredited, as you would expect from a quality engineering program. Um, and th those are some of our most popular majors. About a third of our students are in uh, one of our engineering majors at Lafayette. Um, a few distinctive points about our engineering college on top of all those things. Uh, one is that uh, study abroad is huge for us. Uh, it is about 60% as well at Lafayette, but within the School of Engineering, we build in time for our engineers to study abroad, uh, which is really valuable for them uh, in their experience. Uh, second semester sophomore year, we have dedicated programs to keep them all on track uh, and going towards a four year graduation. Um, we also uh, have 40% of our, our engineering students are women. Uh, so if, if you are out there and, and thinking you're looking for a sisterhood or you have a student who's looking for a sisterhood that is well represented in engineering, uh, you will find that at Lafayette College uh, with our, our College of Engineering. Um, we also have Greek life on campus. Um, about 40% of our students are involved in Greek life. 8% uh, of our students are, uh, or sorry, eight, well, 8% 8 total of our students are international, 13% from this last class uh, this past year, but a lot of diversity on campus uh, and a really great community, again, to be a part of, to be involved with, to be both in and outside of the classroom. Uh, this is our town, Easton, Pennsylvania. You can see in the bottom right corner on the map there, uh, we are about an hour and a half from New York City, uh, about an hour from Philadelphia. We like to say we're in the middle of everywhere. Uh, we are a beautiful 30,000 person college town. Our campus is right up on the hill there behind, uh, uh, kind of right under the skyline. So you can roll straight down the hill into downtown. Um, and our students have that, that lovely college town feel, the restaurants, the nightlife, uh, the coffee shops, all that geared towards the students. Uh, some amazing festivals, one of the oldest farmers markets in the country, um, and just a, a really great core experience for them. Uh, right next to campus, um, but it's part of what we call the Lehigh Valley, which is the third largest metro area in Pennsylvania. So about 700,000 people uh, in the metro, Bethlehem and Allentown are 100,000 plus people, 20 minutes down the road. So it's a really nice mix of having that core college town, uh, smaller vibe, but then also having the bigger cities uh, just down the road for anything from shopping, concerts, to internships and job opportunities. Um, again, a few fun facts. Um, a lot of people don't realize uh, that Crayola crayons were invented in Easton, Pennsylvania. We still have one of the major factories there uh, producing quite a few uh, crayons every day. Um, but again, uh, our locations, some major festivals, um, we have 36 different residence hall options and houses on campus for our students, nine different dining halls and experiences from the big dining hall to uh, more restaurant or cafe style experiences. Um, again, study abroad is huge. Research opportunities are huge at Lafayette. Uh, at least 50% of our students are doing research. They're doing internships, externships, field experiences, um, and uh, they're finding success after they graduate. Um, our students um, are uh, having a 73% acceptance rate to medical school, 91% to law school, and so on. Um, you can see our deadlines right there. I'm just about out of time, um, but if you are a senior or have a student uh, looking to apply, we only do early decision and regular decision. The deadlines you can see there, we are test optional this year and next year for sure. Um, we meet 100% of demonstrated need as well in our financial aid and have some great merit scholarship options uh, as well for students who may not make it into the high need category. Um, and with that, uh, I will turn my time over to Brandon from University of Utah. Thanks, David, to you and to Lafayette College. Next up, I'd love to present to you the University of Utah. Take it away, Brandon, whenever you're ready. Awesome. Thank you, Courtney. Thank you, David. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Brandon. I am an assistant director of recruitment at the University of Utah. I am, like David, regionally based here in Southern California, so I am your uh, admission uh, officer um, to stay in touch with and to work with. Um, here's a lovely picture of our campus. Uh, we are located in Salt Lake City, Utah, which is about an hour and a half flight from Santa Barbara. Um, when you land at the airport, we're about seven miles away. 
Um, and in between the airport and our campus is downtown Salt Lake City, which is the capital of the entire state. So it's kind of nice that in our front yard, you have uh, two miles away downtown Salt Lake with the shopping, the eating, um, the internships and all that other fun stuff. But literally, and as you can kind of see, let me go back. And in our backyard, we, are, we butt up right into the mountains. So um, our backyard has a pretty view, our front yard, front, front yard has a pretty view. And then while you're on campus, you, you're surrounded by these amazing um, uh, old brick and new brick um, and amazing um, uh, opportunities that exist around campus that I'm gonna share with you, uh, share with you all today. Um, again, we call ourselves a college city, so not necessarily a small college town and not necessarily a big city. Um, we really do appreciate that the students kind of see the entire state of Utah, um, uh, it, its campus for four years. Um, we're 30 minutes away from seven world-class ski resorts, a few hours drive to, to um, five amazing national parks. And as I mentioned earlier, our downtown area is, is bustling. Um, a lot of new businesses being attracted to Salt Lake City. Um, capital, the state capital right there, um, houses over 500 interns directly from the University of Utah. Because again, as the public flagship option for the state, it is kind of nice that we have, again, the, the resources and, and networking opportunities, um, literally, again, a few blocks off our campus. Um, and on top of that, we give free public transportation to um, all of our students um, over the course of the four years. So you can get from um, one part of town to the other uh, via our track system, which is that above ground light rail train, or even from our tracks, uh, which is called tracks, from our campus to the airport and back, um, all completely free. So again, very connected, very convenient, and, and as cheap as, as zero dollars for all four years. So when you get to campus, this is the academic menu that you're gonna be able to sample from. We are an undergraduate focused institution, meaning that three out of four of our students are undergraduate students. Okay, so in the classroom, it's gonna be, have that intimate discussion-based feel that you maybe wouldn't hear from a large public school, but we at the U really do pride ourselves in the undergraduate you know, experience. Um, so about 70% of our classrooms have 30 students or less in them. So ultimately you're gonna be able to get your questions answered. You're gonna work in small collaborative discussion-based groups uh, pretty much as early as your first, as your first year. Um, and we really do, again, incentivize our students to, to really embrace um, the academic exploration that, that exists and the, and the fluidity in which they can change from one major to the next. So we have over 150 majors to choose from. You are not applying to the University of Utah as this major versus that major. You can apply saying, I'm interested in this field. And if you're admitted to the university, you can most certainly get tracked on that program on, on day one freshman year. But you certainly have that, that option to say, hey, I want to come in undeclared and shop a bunch of different programs. And uh, again, um, that, that undeclared or undecided um, um, framework that you're working in will not inhibit your ability to jump into a major or graduate in four years. And we really do, again, have a very flexible academic plan. Um, we're most known, of course, for our research. So we're the only medical school in the entire state. We have um, amazing amount of, of, of research of funding and, and resources. We are the only research one level university in the entire state. We are the only member of the AAU in the entire state. Um, so ultimately, when you do find your academic passion, it will be fully supported with amazing um, academic um, uh, research uh, opportunities. Um, some key facts here. Um, we really we really want to make sure the first year goes really right. So we have amazing um, residential life uh, options for students to choose from. The building in the middle tile there is a Collard Village, a brand new residential hall only for first year students. Um, we have about 40% of our campus, our total population, 40% of students are from outside of Utah. So that creates a kind of a seven day diverse dynamic uh, college kind of community um, throughout, the, throughout the academic year. Um, and then on top of that, um, about 92% uh, 90, uh, of our students identify, uh, sorry, let me go back. 92% uh, uh, of our students get involved in uh, a lot of different clubs and organizations that aren't sur uh, sur surrounding or involving um, Greek life. So we really are encouraging students to really you know, spread their wings and, and join a ton of different opportunities that exist um, throughout, the, throughout the campus community. Um, I just wanna show you this picture. Um, this is an example of, our, of one of our residential halls where it kind of combines living and learning all in one go. This is Lasan Studios on the first floor. It's a woodworking shop, a metalworking shop, three printer room, a tinkering room, prototyping room, uh, empty office spaces. We really are trying to encourage students to get their big ideas off the ground with the help and support other fellow peers. And again, as you see, there are nearly 40, 40 companies launched in the last two years suggest that there's a lot of uh, great things um, happening for uh, our students. Uh, outside of the classroom. Um, and again, 600 clubs and organizations should tell you that our students are highly dynamic, highly um, engaged in, in, in community building and, and uh, shared experiences across the board. And of course, we're part of the PAC-12. We're really, we're really proud of this affiliation. Um, and I love the fact that our community, local community and our, and our campus come together to fill this stadium. Uh, almost 54,000 uh, uh, sold out crowd last, last weekend, which was a record attendance for us. Um, but I like this picture too, because it shows you under the word Pacific, how close we are to our, from our campus to downtown Salt Lake City. Again, 
two miles away and you can kind of see the cityscape behind the word Pacific there. Um, really quickly, if you're a senior, we really want you to apply to us by December 1st. That means we can throw all the merit money we, we can at you. We only need two things, your common application and your transcript to be submitted. That is it, test score optional this year. Um, and um, if you could get those in by December 1st, you're gonna qualify for a lot of money. The biggest money you could qualify for, of course, is our WUI uh, tuition discount. So if you get your transcript common app into us by December 1st, you have at least a 3.0 GPA, you will have um, uh, a ton of money to, that you'll save. Uh, you go from $31,000 a year to about 13,500. So all, ultimately awesome, awesome money you can, uh, you can save. We want you to come visit us. And again, here's a quick snapshot of information, which I'll copy in the chat, but sorry, Courtney, squeeze it all in there, throw it back to you. Thanks so much, everyone. Um, have a good rest of your night. Brandon, thanks so much to you and the University of Utah. Um, audience, don't forget, you can put those questions in the Q&A at any time. Um, next up, I have the pleasure of introducing to you the University of Alabama. Take it away whenever you're ready. Thank you. Um, my name is Megan Borden. I am the regional recruiter for the Houston, Texas area. So um, I am actually filling in for Kevin Payton, who is y'all's regional recruiter that lives there in California. Um, and he had a family emergency, so I am filling in for him to this evening. Uh, so excited to be here. Thank you so much for participating today. Uh, University of Alabama, we are located in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. We are kind of a rural urban mixture. Um, we're known as the Capstone College for the state of Alabama with a little over 38,000 students that attend. And over 50% of our student population is actually from out of state. Um, if you decide you would like to fly into the, uh, to visit the University of Alabama, you would fly into uh, either Birmingham or Atlanta. If you flow in, fly into Birmingham, Alabama, um, Birmingham, Alabama, it's going to be about a 45 minute to an hour drive to Tuscaloosa. And then if you fly into uh, Atlanta, Georgia, it's about a um, three hour drive to Tuscaloosa. Uh, so whichever one works best, works best for you. So becoming a legend and applying to the University of Alabama, the application is available either on our website or you can apply through the Common App. Either application is perfectly fine. We do not have a preference as to which application you choose to do. Um, for our freshman students, uh, the application for admission and for transfer students, the um, application for admission is also the scholarship application. So be sure that you're paying attention to detail when filling out that application, because um, once admitted, your application will then go to our scholarships team to be reviewed for competitive scholarships. Uh, we do need your high school transcripts and test scores for this year for our seniors. It is test optional. So you are welcome to submit test scores if you would like to, or you can just submit test scores to us for, uh, for scholarship purposes and apply test optional. It's completely up to you. Um, for juniors and so on, we are still being determined if we will continue to be test optional in the future. We will know more in the spring semester if, will that, if that will be permanent. For transfer students applying to the University of Alabama, the application, um, again, is available to you all depending on how many credit hours you have coming in. So if you have 24, if you have less than 24 credit hours coming into the, uh, at the time of your application, we do need your high school transcripts and possibly your test scores depending on when you graduated high school. And then if you have 24 or more credit hours at the time of your application as a transfer student, um, we just need your college transcripts and we would need your college transcripts from any colleges you've ever attended. As long as you apply to the University of Alabama by January 15th for my incoming freshman students, you will be reviewed for scholarships to the University of Alabama. Um, these scholarships listed here are geared just for incoming freshman students. We do have transfer scholarships as well. However, um, those scholarships, that application needs to be submitted to us if you are a transfer student by March 1st to be reviewed for those competitive scholarships. Um, for our incoming freshman students, as you can see here, we have both competitive scholarships and automatic merit scholarships. The competitive scholarships, we are just going to be reviewing you um, overall as your student, the application that you fill out as far as your honors, awards, um, any extracurricular activities you were involved in, and along with your high school GPA. Your test score will not be reviewed in the competitive scholarship category. Even if you submit a test score to us, we will not review that um, test score for the competitive scholarships. The automatic merit scholarships, however, do require a test score to be submitted to us. We require both the test score and the GPA to, uh, for students to be automatically awarded those scholarships. The competitive scholarship and automatic scholarship cannot be stacked together, but we would award the student whichever one they're they are eligible for that's the most money. To kind of give you a visual of what we're looking at um, for our merit scholarships, these here is kind of a breakdown. So as long as you have 
um, one of the test scores. You do not have to have both of the test scores, but you do have to have the test score along with the GPA. As long as you have that, you are automatically awarded that scholarship just for being accepted to the University of Alabama. You are welcome to take the test as many times as you are able to. The last test date that we will accept is February. So if you increase your test score and it meets a different bracket, we will increase your scholarship. It could be March before you know if the competitive scholarship will override the merit-based scholarship. So I definitely encourage students, if you have not taken a test, if you are able to, I know with COVID um, and different restrictions that it's been a little difficult for some students. So if you are able to, we definitely encourage you to do so. We do have several different rounds of um, that students will be notified if they have been awarded a scholarship. If you do not hear anything those first to two rounds, it does not mean that you're not going to receive a scholarship from the University of Alabama. It just means that your application scholarship application is still being reviewed and it could be um, the third round that you hear something. So all students must be admitted before or by January 15th to be eligible to be reviewed for these scholarships. Campus involvement at the University of Alabama, we do have a misconception that you have to be involved in Greek life because we do have a very high presence of Greek um, fraternity and sorority life at the University of Alabama, but that is, like I said, misconception. Only 35% of our student population is actually Greek, and that's including both the sororities and fraternities. Um, if you would like to get involved in a fraternity or sorority, by all means, you are welcome to go through the sorority and fraternity recruitment. Otherwise, we have over 650 plus organizations and clubs that you can participate in. And we definitely encourage you to get acclimated on campus and um, get, get involved as much as possible. Um, we have also living on campus. Freshman students are required to live on campus their first year. Uh, so definitely take advantage of that. Um, if you, we are also proud of our athletes at the University of Alabama, um, and they're, uh, but we are not just known for our athletics, we are also known for our academics as well, multiple programs at the university, um, number one in the SEC, number two in the nation for internship placement, and we also have new college where you can potentially customize and create yourself a degree, so our, um, we're known for our College of Engineering, Business, Communications, and Nursing. So we're really gonna take our part to make sure that you're uh, well-rounded at the university. If you plan a visit, we do have a QR code there. Please take advantage of um, coming to visit the University of Alabama. You can contact Kate, uh, Kevin Payton. I will include his contact information um, in the chat so you can reach out to him if you would like to set up an in-depth visit so you can uh, meet with uh, the college of your intended major um, along with maybe some programs or organizations that you're looking at possibly participating in as well. Again, my name is Megan Borden. I am the regional recruiter for the Houston, Texas um, area, and I will include Kevin Payton's information. You're welcome to reach out to me as well if you do not get his contact information, and I'll be happy to get you in contact with him. Roll Tide, and have a great evening. Thank you. Megan, thank you so much to you and the University of Alabama. Our final presentation tonight will be from Biola University. Take it away whenever you're ready. Hey guys, um, let me see. My name is Wendy and I'm trying to do this. Um, okay. I hope you guys can see this. My name is Wendy. Um, yes, I'm representing Biola. And um, so, just so you guys know, Biola is a private Christian school. Um, we are we are Christian all across the board. So from faculty to staff to student, we do all sign a testimony of faith. Uh, where is Biola at and who is at Biola? So Biola is in LA County, but I like to say it also flirts with Orange County because it's so close to Orange County. So we're like 10 miles away from Disneyland. Um, we're 19 miles away from the heart of Los Angeles and we're 14 miles from the beach. So there's a lot of great activity to do. Um, we do have 3,500 um, undergraduate students. We also have graduate students as well. We have about 2,000 graduate students. And um, we have 40% of students of color. We have 43 countries that are represented within the student body. There's also a 15% of first gen college, first generation college students, 47 states um, that are are at 47 different states that our students come from and 37% um, of our students live off of campus. 
what is there to study at Biola? So we have uh, over 40 majors that you can study. Some of our popular majors are business, nursing, psychology, cinema. Um, I also have a couple of students that um, are interested in our engineering program. A lot of our students go um, obviously for Bible because we're a Christian university. Um, and our students go after that. So 87% of our graduate students, are, I'm sorry, 87% of our students, once they graduate within six months, they'll either find a full-time job or they will decide to go back to graduate school. And that's, um, that's better than 75% of the graduates from all across the Western US. Another thing to note is that 90% of um, undergrads do participate in internships, job service projects, um, and different opportunities um, before they even graduate, which is what uh, gives us a good connection. And we also, um, a lot of our grads work at very well-known companies like Walt Disney, Facebook, Apple, and so on. Oh, I go next. Um, what... <laughs> What is student life like at Biola? So we have 55 student run clubs um, on our campus. We have five different campus ministries. Um, we have 10 different resident halls. We have eight different affinity groups. We have intramural sports and we, we're also NCAA, NCAA division two um, school. So we do compete with different types of schools, not just, um, not just Christian schools and financial aid. So how can one afford Biola? So tuition does cost 44, about 44,000 and for room and board it's 11,000. So an estimate is about 55,000, which sounds like a lot. And trust me, I was scared too when I um, wanted to go there also. And um, and what's really cool about Biola is that there's, they do offer a freshman, I'm sorry, an academic scholarship for freshmen. So this this year they bumped it up two grand. So now um, once you come in with a, G a GPA of 3.0 unweighted, you're automatically, um, you automatically get a, a scholarship for $12,000 a year. The highest is being 21,000. And um, trust me, 100% of our students receive financial aid or scholarship or of some form. No one pays the sticker price for Biola. And um, we have more than 10 plus university um, university scholarships and um, we have internal and external scholarships um, that you can apply for so and it is stackable so if you have two scholarships from an outside source you can definitely come and bring that in and we'll count it towards your tuition so what is biola looking for biola is looking um that Obviously that there's a, that we're looking for believers. So we're looking for people of Christian faith. We do want to hear testimony and we are looking for people who, who desire uh, to deepen and strengthen their relationship with God, but also to, um, to find, to figure out how to, um, how to bridge the gap between academics and your spiritual life and how to study scripture. Um, we also ask that there's a 3.0 um, unweighted GPA. Also just know for this year, like, Someone else mentioned earlier, um, we are test optional this year. As for the juniors, we're not sure yet. We're still, we're also still waiting. Um, I think we're gonna know by January. We obviously also ask that you get um, a high school diploma. Um, just so you guys know, there is an early action for um, deadline. That's November 15th and um, yeah, so I'm um, also just so you guys know, I'm adding my number on here. You guys can go ahead and text me or email me however you'd like, whatever's easier for you guys. And if you have any questions, let me know. That's all I got. Wendy, thank you so much to you and Biola University. I'd now like to invite all of our panelists to turn back on their cameras and I'm gonna ask you a little bit more about your institution, but also tap into some of your expertise. So we'll go in the same order that you presented originally. Um, what's one thing that you would really like students and families to remember about your institution? So Derek, Darren, that means you're up first. Sure, um, at Skinner College, we are an extremely creative community. We say that creative thought matters in everything that we do, and that's in the arts, the sciences, our business and pre-professional programs. And so uh, certainly the creativity of our community is something I would like uh, families to learn more about and, and remember about Skidmore College. 
grateful for the second opportunity uh, to share because I totally wasn't able to get to this, but um, our motto at Lafayette College is Kernan, which means why not? Uh, it was the Marquis de Lafayette's motto uh, and his rally cry as well. Uh, for those of you who have seen Hamilton, it is that French uh, Frenchman, the Marquis de Lafayette. Um, but the why not mentality and lifestyle is something we're looking for both from students in high school and also what we're looking for our students to uh, be a part of in our, our college community. Uh, we want students who, why not study abroad? Why not do research? Why not double major and pursue multiple interests? Um, that is our community in a nutshell um, and something that's really important to us and something that we're looking for uh, in the application process. So, Kernan. Yeah, so there's two things about the University of Utah. Um, one is we have been um, ranked the, the most affordable school for out-of-state students within the Pac-12. Um, uh, conference, which I think is great. So it speaks to the access piece. And I think academically speaking, uh, popular majors tend to be engineering, um, business, nursing, um, a lot of pre-health uh, programs, social science programs. And the beautiful thing about the university is that none of our majors are impacted. So you have, again, back to that idea of flexibility, um, uh, academically speaking, when you get to the U to really discover and, and find, um, uh, uh, go right into your, your passion that you already know or, or discover new ones along the way. Um, so something I, I love about the school. So I would definitely have to say, um, we are very proud of the ranking that we've recently received for um, number one in the SEC, number two in the nation for internship placement. So getting that job and investing into your future um, after you graduate from college, knowing that you have such high chances of being able to get a job after graduating is extremely extraordinary. Um, I 73% of our students that graduated this past year, 90, um, sorry, 73% of our students that graduated this past year participated in a survey and 90% of them reported back that they already had a job or were in the process of being hired. And that was during the pandemic. So that's really huge. And we're very proud of our students and the success that they've had. And these internships are not just within the state of Alabama. These internships can take place domestically or internationally. So you're welcome to participate in wherever you'd like to do that. Yeah, um, that I think for Biola, one of the cool things is, um, I did forget to mention this, but uh, our faculty to student ratio is 14 to one. So a lot of our students get a lot of the support and um, and attention, not that they need, but that would help them succeed. And then they also get um, help because of our career center. They can also receive a lot of training in their fields and they get exposed to a lot of different experiences that can help them. Kind of like how someone else mentioned, like, do you wanna do this? Do you wanna do something else? And um, it's really cool and it's been fun um, and, and almost culture shocking for me to go into classrooms and professors are praying for you and you're like, this is normal. And so it's like, yeah, but it's, it's been a really sweet, yeah, it's been sweet for me to. So now I'm going to tap into your uh, expertise as admissions professionals. I'm sure you um, hear things all the time that you're like, oh, I wish I, I wish that I could tell students that that is a total myth. So um, we'll go in the same order. What myth um, in, within the college search or the college admissions process would you like to debunk? And Darren, you're up first again. Sure. Um, I am, well, for colleges that talk about financial aid and, and for colleges that will meet the full need of a family, um, I'm often sharing with families that if a student chooses to apply early decision uh, or regular decision, um, if a college is going to meet a student's full need and a family's full need, the college will be affordable if they're offered admission. So a student who is offered admission in early decision and qualifies for need-based financial aid, we and other colleges who make that pledge will make that experience affordable. We won't gap a student and then tell a student that, you know, you have to come up with more money than uh, what you thought you would. So some students think that if you apply early decision, you won't have your need met or you won't have the college can't be affordable and you're taking a risk applying another decision. And that's not the case at colleges that would make that pledge of meeting your full need. Uh, for me, um, I wanna to touch on test optional uh, because I think it freaks out a lot of families. Um, we mean it, test optional means test optional. Uh, if you choose not to submit a test score, it's not gonna hurt your application uh, in any way. We're not gonna get in the weeds of like 
theorizing, okay, they didn't send one. Does that mean it's bad? Should we assume it's bad? We're not docking you points because we're guessing that it's bad because you didn't like, again, a lot of students didn't even have a chance to take the test. Uh, this past year or to, to have the time and preparation maybe that they should have. So we are just test optional means test optional. If you don't send it, you're totally fine. And I know we're confusing because sometimes we say things like interviews are optional, but we really encourage it. Um, and we do mean that as well, but we'll be very upfront. Test optional truly means test optional. Don't feel like you have to send a test score. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Dave. Um, I think I don't want to know if it's a debunk necessarily, but what I would encourage students and, and, and families is to really, really go visit a school. It doesn't, if you can't make it to the University of Utah, you can't make it to Arizona State, you can't, you know, leave, you know, your bubble more than an hour because of time or, or COVID. Um, if there's a school nearby that you can visit, even if you're not necessarily that keen on them, I'd still say go visit them because you might hear and experience things on the tour that you might not uh, have thought you would have you would have felt or heard uh, or seen because you might be with families that have been on a thousand tours and they know all the right questions to ask and I think if you're able to sort of give up that time for an hour long tour um, I think it actually can help uh, you know answer um, your questions or help shape your questions a lot better for for future planning so um, sometimes I think people go oh, I know where USC is I know where UC Santa Barbara is because you know that I see them on TV and I have a friend that went there to that school and show me pictures of campus is beautiful but until you experience it for yourself um i think um i, I think uh you're you're selling your your college search experience a little short that way so please go visit a school and hopefully it leads to more down the road all of these are such great advices and everything i've, I've enjoyed it um i would definitely have to say for several students um and parents utilize us, utilize recruiters. Um, don't think that you don't have, uh, if, you, if you lack a support system, if you are a first generation college student, if you are unsure as to what steps you need to take as far as the application process, even if maybe you're not 100% sure that this college is the right fit for you, utilize your, for those specific colleges that you are interested in, talk with them, meet with them, get information because we are experts in our field. And if we don't have the answer, or if this is not the right fit college for you, we, a lot of us are colleagues and we can help direct you to the, maybe the next person. So definitely take advantage of us. Don't, don't be walking around in the dark and, and trying to do everything on your own and be alone in this process. This can be scary. It can be nerve wracking and we are here for you. Yeah, kind of going off of um, just what Megan said was so great um, and everyone else, of course, and it, it's just definitely like when I was going to college, I was first in and I didn't have anyone to kind of refer to and say like, hey, how do I do this or what is this? And so um, going into college really was a very terrifying time for me and it was something that I felt so um, I just there was such an imposter syndrome like I don't belong here I don't deserve this and and that's not true that's that's the whole reason we're here and that's the whole reason we're all doing this is to to show you and walk alongside you that you can do this and we're here to help you and um, definitely the one thing I wish I was more encouraged to do was apply for scholarships so definitely just apply to as many as you can talk to as many counselors as you can and say how can I do this what can I do this and um, because you do um, I think one of our one of the things I, I come across a lot is how can I afford Biola how can I afford college in general which is what something Darren was mentioning was how how are we going to afford higher education no one in my family has ever gone to college or how, like you know there's just so many things and um, but yeah, definitely apply to scholarships. Um, and, and like was said earlier, definitely you utilize us and talk to people because we, we are all here to help students. Well, you guys are such wonderful professionals. And, and I know that the families listening um, took a lot away from the conversation that was had this evening. Thank you everyone so much for joining us. Um, as you close out, there'll be a quick five question survey. Um, sign up for more sessions. I told you this would be really fun and there's still two more hours left to go. This was recorded. Also the panels from yesterday have already been uploaded and you can access all of that at strivescan.com slash C-A-L-S-O-A-P. Thanks so much everyone and have a great evening. Bye-bye.